What's our topic today, Jen? Two one buy downs um, and how we can use them to get some more transactions in this fantabulous market that we're in. That's fantastic. Karen, how do you use a two one buy down, dude, with your realtor base? Oh, my goodness. Well, there's a lot of different ways that they can, you know, you've got a lot of buyers right now that are on a budget and they want to stay within that budget. So we're hoping that rates eventually will start to level off. So if we can get them in within their budget right now, down the road, they can refinance at a lesser rate and everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. <laughs> So, Jen, how does a 2-1 buy-down work? So, you're basically paying the interest ahead of time uh, for a certain amount of years um, to begin with. So, there's a couple versions of it. You have a 3-2-1, a 2-1 buy-down, which is what we're talking about today, which is probably the most useful for, uh, for the market that we're in. Um, and it's going to lower the payment down to a rate that's... 2% less than what it uh, what it's actually locked at for those two years. Um, so you're going to have a rate that for the first year is 2% less. So for instance, if you have seven and a half, you're going to be at five and a half, which makes your payment a heck of a lot more reasonable, right? That puts us back into somewhere, some kind of same interest rate. Um, and then the um, next year, it will increase slightly. And then the third year, you would end up with your payment that you already had. However, knowing what we know about the markets and kind of what Karen alluded to, too, is that really we're, you know, we're looking at rates probably turning around sometime over the next 12 months. And so the the thing with these are is that there's two two good things. A, nine times out of 10, it's the seller that pays for the majority of it. So it's not a cost to your, to your buyer um, and they get the benefit of the lower payment. And then B, uh, when the rates turn back around, then they're in a position to go ahead and refinance that, pardon me, and then they will um, actually get a rebate back in regards to what's left on that buy down. Um, so it has some so question. What are we qualifying the buyer at? The higher rate. Okay. So you're definitely not talking about a market for your, you know, 580 FHA borrowers on something like this. Um, it's definitely probably going to be towards your um, either well established first time home buyers that have good savings already decent credit, whatnot, um, and then a little flexible room in what they can put down and what they can use towards closing costs. Um, because obviously, if the seller is contributing uh, the the seller contr uh, contributions towards your buy down, they're not going to have as much to contribute towards, there's limits. So you're not going to have as much to put towards closing costs. So it is going to be a buyer that has some some resources available to them. Yeah, they got to have skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, sure. Not a lot. I mean, you know, for instance, if somebody was going to put 10% down and, you know, maybe we need to do five, they can do the buy down with the, with the seller and then they can cover their closing costs, you know, uh, the other way. So, and so it has its pluses and minuses, I guess. So from a real estate perspective or a realtor perspective, when they're writing the contract, they need to identify that the seller contributions are for the rate buy down. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So what we're going to want to do is um, work with our loan officers um, pretty closely. However, we do have a tool today for you guys too. And just in case anybody is curious, if you'd like. Is there a maximum for seller concessions? Well, per guidelines from Fannie Freddie, uh, Jenny May, um, they have set up the guidelines. It's not a, a NEXA or a lender restriction. It's it's what, you know, what the uh, in buyer of these things or, you know, uh, where, where all of our guidelines are actually come from, they've actually set up the maximum seller concessions. The, we the why would be, uh, I don't know, you need to go talk to somebody smarter than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but so much, so much 
confidence in our in our support. Right? Uh, well, I mean, is, it, is there a why? I don't know no. why. Some some genius politician said, you know, hey, we need to restrict the seller concession. Though. Yeah, it's that I, I large that. seven thousand page thing called Dodd Frank. Um, so, um, and we have some live questions. It looks like yes, yes Sergio says. Is there an easy way for us realtors to calculate the buy down rate fee? Yeah, get with your next loan officer and they yeah. have <laughs> available for you. Folks, you have to understand this is a little bit about Nexo, but. <laughs> and then <laughs> let's see. Um, Tom... My lending partners have this available to me. Uh, Nexo loan officer will have this available to you. So then. All right, Tanya, if you unmute yourself, you can ask. And, you know, while Tanya is unmuting herself, there was a question out here as to uh, why the buy down is, is a better option than the seller lowering the purchase price. Um, can either of you speak to that? And if we, if I remember correctly from yesterday, if they don't use that, it gets credited back to them? It's credited yeah. back to, well, the principal. Of the, oh, go ahead, Dan. So. So if the the first part of it, um, the 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 benefit in in my opinion, coming from in my neighborhood, I would rather you pay for the seller concession rather than the lower the value of my house because mm -hmm. that's essentially what you're doing is if you lower the value or if you lower your purchase price, the same amount as that seller concession. You're affecting all the all the values in that neighborhood, and so you know, selfishly, as someone in that neighborhood, I don't want you to affect the value of my house. Um, you know, the the net effect is actually better for the buyer. You know, the ha, you know, if you just simply lower the price fifteen thousand dollars, that's not going to affect his payment in the same way as a two one buy down. You know. And and let's be honest, how how many home buyers keep their houses more than what seven years anymore? I mean that number is extremely low, and and with where rates are currently, if you listen to Barry Abib, who I feel is the you know one of the leading experts on on rates, is he believes somewhere mid mid year and next year we're going to be back in the fours, you know, or or worst case maybe fives. Um, so we're going to give opportunities for these these new home buyers actually to get a refund off of this, uh, or I won't say a refund, but it, it'll reduce their actual principal payment by whatever is left on that buy down amount. Yeah, 